So, continuing the discussion from the last uh, video from part one, why is Bitcoin unique? Specifically, when compared to all coins, uh, but also unique in world history. Unique on uh, on a, a a level in which you tr you really have to zoom out, adjust the aperture of your of your historical perception um, as wide as possible. Um, and look at Bitcoin from uh, the perspective of centuries, from the perspective of uh, history when seen from this perspective Bitcoin is truly unique and altcoins are incapable of replicating or replacing Bitcoin what happens with the vast majority of altcoins is that you you basically have uh, early investors you, you have an IPO or sorry, uh, an ICO, uh, initial coin offering. You have early investors. Uh, perhaps you have uh, insiders who who get um, a portion of 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 the coins. You have the the creators that, of course, get their their allocation of it. Um, this is not how money is is created. When gold became money over a period of, of many hundreds and thousands of years, uh, it, this is not what it, there was not a small group of people who who just said, okay, let's let's get uh, let's invent this thing called gold, and let's say that it's money, and I I get to have 20% of it because I'm the inventor. That's not how it worked, right? It was an organic evolution. What what you see with these coins that are similar to Bitcoin in the sense that they are algorithmically scarce and perhaps they even have a network that defends that scarcity but it it would be more accurate to look at this form of scarcity as the 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 form of scarcity represented by a fixed amount of shares of equity in a company that is a form of scarcity and let's say that there was a, a law or a rule that uh, or or even a, a cryptographic rule that guaranteed that there would never be more shares issued of a particular stock because of the initial distribution of those shares which you know went to uh, Perhaps the founders got their share. Perhaps early investors got their share, and so forth. And then there was uh, an IPO, and those those initial initial shares were sold into the market to retail investors. This model is not a model that works for money. That is critical to understand. A a a true like hard money. It this is not how hard money comes into exist existence this is not how hard money is adopted uh, in a in an organic uh, natural sense by humanity that is not how it works so you can you can have your uh, your your altcoin that is that is scarce in the same way I would argue that uh, stock shares can be scarce but it's not the algorithmic scarcity that matters. It is the initial distribution that matters when it comes to money. Okay? This, this is the critical... The people who argue between Bitcoin and altcoins and so forth, they're often, I think, arguing or they're avoiding or they fail to recognize this critical distinction. If, if we want to say that altcoins have value, Okay, that's another discussion that we can have, and we can we can have that debate, but but we must accept that only Bitcoin is digital gold. 
We must accept it. Because Bitcoin's initial... Uh, it, its early life can never, ever, ever be replicated. Essentially for the rest of humanity, for the rest of time. And because that can never happen again, it's a once in a humanity event. Digital scarcity being organically discovered and fairly distributed over many years before the institutions ever caught wind, before anyone cornered the market, before any monopoly on its supply was created. That can never ever happen again because now we know that absolute digital scarcity is possible. But it is only possible in the uh, the, the first um, the first system to have graphed to have placed a ledger on top of that that uh, that I that the idea of the, of absolute scarcity I talked about this in the video uh, uh, Bitcoin is a transcendental object there's a sense in which Bitcoin is this it is the technology that allows us to bridge to the idea the platonic ideal of absolute digital scarcity bitcoin is is the the first bridge that allows us to access that ideal and that could only be established once you could only have that that graph or that uh that grid overlaid upon the idea of absolute scarcity once and it had to be organic and it had to be uh fairly distributed in in the initial few years where the inflation rate of bitcoin was uh enough that no one could corner the market once the market caught on to what it was now no one can corner the market it's just impossible and that's that can never be replicated that's why bitcoin is gold digital gold well it, it's more than gold bitcoin is the first time ever in history ever in the history of humanity that we have had the ability to monetize absolute scarcity that is never going to happen again for these reasons that is why i own only bitcoin now to the extent that value can be created sustainably in certain altcoins is a different story that perhaps we will tackle in another video but in my opinion there is a lot more risks involved in those projects they are basically what what you are doing is with bitcoin you are saving you are saving your money because it is it is money right ethereum is not money xrp well that it if you are an altcoin that is competing with bitcoin to be money i would say you're going to zero without hesitation if you are an altcoin that has some other purpose than being money then we can set that argument aside we can talk about that later but i would say if you invest in those projects you are doing just that you are investing you you are the venture capital and you are investing in uh in startups you are investing in you are basically a vc investor investing in startup companies and in uh, startup tech companies as a vc or angel investor or, or whatever is a world away from uh, but from being thrifty and diligently saving your money these are not even in the same ballpark let alone the same continent these are there's a world of difference between these um, so if you have some extra capital and you are willing to take some very very large risks with it okay then then you make you're a responsible adult and you can make that decision uh to take those risks but do not make the mistake of seeing any altcoin as 
basically similar to Bitcoin or uh, to being to having similar risk profiles. I would say that all all coins can go to zero, absolutely, and most of them will. Bitcoin is entirely different. It is money. Bitcoin is not going to zero. It's simply not going to happen. And in that sense, I, because I, I personally, my investing thesis is such that I recognize there to be um, incredible potential for the uh, for Bitcoin to have orders of magnitude amounts of energy and wealth transferred into it simply by virtue of being what it is uh, absolute scarcity that can be uh, that in that an individual can custody and trade it is uh, the monetization of absolute scarcity what more do you want I mean that alone that opportunity alone for for me at least that is that is enough I I don't need to take uh, any extra risk I am quite happy with that value proposition and for that reason I just hold Bitcoin I did hold altcoins I went down the altcoin rabbit hole I researched them for hundreds of hours I know what I'm talking about in terms of altcoins I've I've done my due diligence I have not simply ignored them. I have not uh, dismissed them. I looked into them and I own them. Well, at some point, you know, uh, going down the the Bitcoin rabbit hole, I realized what I was actually dealing with, and I I just sold everything. I, I sold all my alts. The reason why I did this is because of the central thesis of this video, and that is that. The early, uh, the early origins of Bitcoin and the fact that everyone dismissed it because obviously Bitcoin would never work and because obviously it was self-evident that digital scarcity was impossible. That is the only reason why Bitcoin succeeded is, is for, the, for those critical early years and that origin story that that creation myth of Bitcoin will live on for centuries and it can never be replicated it never occurred before it will never occur after that the the critical early distribution of uh, the vast majority of Bitcoin supply that will never be replicated and when you're dealing with an asset like that, and we're still so early, then you realize what the nature of the game is. It has become a scramble in slow motion to simply accumulate whatever you can while there's still time. And it, it's not that you won't be able to accumulate Bitcoin in the future. You always will be able to. But it is this critical window in which we are between two states of Bitcoin's history. That early state in which it was uh, essentially dismissed by everyone and we are in this there's, there's this metamorphosis this, this stage of transformation in which on the other side, it will be the inverse. It, it will be a state in which virtually everyone accepts uh, the, the the nature and the reality of Bitcoin, and everyone uh, will own it. But we are in between those two states, and that critical opportunity is is going to be can you accumulate enough before the metamorphosis completes before bitcoin uh just swallows the world just 
devours the world. Uh, and it is a... The scramble has already begun. The institutions, uh, there, there's Fortune 500 companies that are putting it on their balance sheet. Billionaires have it on their balance sheet. Nation states, central banks, or at least one, are accumulating it that we know of. I suspect there's more. This is, in slow motion, a scramble. This is a game of musical chairs. The music has stopped. And in that, there's that, that critical few, uh, that critical fraction of a second in which most people have not recognized that the music has stopped yet. They, they still think that maybe there, this is just an interlude, that maybe there is a, another verse coming, but there isn't. The music has stopped, and soon everyone's going to know it, and there's only a finite number of seats available, a, a very finite, an absolutely finite number of seats available. And the nature of the game right now is to scramble to, to get one of those seats. And if you hesitate, I know it's, it, it may feel like you have lots of time because Bitcoin's been around for 12 years and, you know, it's, it's not going anywhere and it's, it's gaining some traction. Look, if you hesitate, if you think in the terms of, of, uh, of decades, if you think with a very long-term time horizon, then you will recognize that there is just this this fleeting moment of opportunity because the music has already stopped. This thing is going to is going to complete its metamorphosis. And on the other side of it, whatever you accumulated during that critical opportunity is essentially 99% of the Bitcoin that you will ever own uh, unless you know unless you are an entrepreneur unless uh, you go out into the world and create uh, uh, create value which which will come back to you in in the form of, of more Bitcoin but in just in terms of uh, for most people uh, the vast majority of the Bitcoin that you own will be accumulated right now and when I say right now, you, this is, you, you do not have time to wait five years, you know. Uh, you need to take this, this opportunity seriously. You need to recognize that there is, uh, that time is of the essence, that this window is rapidly closing. Absolute scarcity was only monetized once it will never occur again it was Bitcoin that did it it was Bitcoin that uh, was able to to monetize absolute digital scarcity it is Bitcoin that you need to accumulate nothing else